hopemystic.com Leave your ego at the door. Leave your ego at the door. Guess who's Bizak? Colombian Peace to the family. It's the Hood Mystic representing www.hoodmystic.com. Be sure to visit www.hoodmystic.com to look over this article that we'll be discussing today. Within this article, there are various links and things of that nature to help you navigate uh, what I'm actually trying to say. And as opposed from you, um, you know, taking my word for it, you do your own research and come up with your own conclusions about the full moon, about your personal self, and how it all relates. Um, like I said, I'm the Hood Mystic representing the hoodmystic.com. Today we're talking about the lunar eclipse that's happening on January 10th, 2020. It is the first full moon of 2020, uh, the first lunar eclipse of 2020, the first full moon of the new decade, the first lunar eclipse of the new decade. And how is it going to kick off? Um, as it relates to me personally, this lunar eclipse is conjunct my natal moon. So the moon is conjunct my natal moon. So very interesting energy. I was listening to a Justin Bieber song called Yummy. Interesting. I have a song called Yum Yum Sauce that I dropped a year earlier. Sounds a lot alike, you know. I have to do more investigation, more research, see what I can do in the legal realms, because hard for me to that's another conversation we'll get back to that later uh but yeah man akasha lunar eclipse is a very i've been doing a lot of research and doing a lot of studying and trying to wrap my mind around this uh what else i've been doing i've been finishing my book slash compendium to how to read a natal chart which is my first book um more or less of a background of just astrology because a lot of people don't really understand astrology or understand the point of it being existentialist and not really understanding the internal dialogue or how to build upon the internal structures of man and then corresponding those internal structures your hormones your meditation all of these things, a lot of people don't have the, the cognizance to be able to accept it as a fact because the facts of the matter is the more that I attain, the more that I have, the better my life is, the better my experience on this plane. So when the when the concept of astrology is brought forth, it is either something that you have to learn a lot about or something that you have to kind of be known about as the deepest astrologer without the actual connection of okay why are we even talking about this stuff why are we talking about the moon why are we talking about the sun why are we talking about planets if we cannot touch them a lot of this is found in the concept of akasha as to why right so i got a lot of astrology to talk about but that's going to come in later videos so be sure to subscribe to my channel hit the notifications bell to be notified whenever I do attempt to go live or whenever I do do this thing and peace to the family, peace to everybody on the live, peace to everybody watching this video. Um, give me like 10 seconds while I take a sip of this beautiful, wonderful coffee. Turn up one time for the one time. So what are we gonna be talking about? Just give you a little overview of the things that we're going to talk about, some various schools of thought, how they can correspond to our daily life. We'll factor in the Sabian symbol of this full moon. We'll factor in the Nishakra. We'll factor in the quote unquote stars and finish it off with the tarot card of the week. Uh, this full moon is very specific with the message that has been given out. And so let's just start here. You know, you know, when we talk about astrology and astronomy and all of that stuff like that, you know, people get real, real loosey goosey when it comes to this concept. It's like, all right, the full moon's in Gemini or something to that effect. And people be like, well, it's in Taurus. Well, 
my astrologer say it's in Taurus, so it ain't in Gemini because of what that person said. Don't take my word on it. Go to the skylive.com, search for January 10th around 2.20 when the lunar eclipse takes place, right? And then just see where's that moon at during that time. Can y'all follow along with me? Because it's really not that complicated. It's really not that hard to understand that the full moon's not in Taurus, it's in Gemini. Like, you can see where the moon's at and you see these two lovely constellations, you know, Castor and Pollux, as they're called. The moon is in Gemini, so that should be the end of the conversation or end of the discussion. But understand the mind control. Understand the, the, the corporate influence action of spirituality and just peep out the 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 initials corporate initiative activity to you know what's going on spiritually if i tell you that your house is on 10th street but you really live on 9th street you'll never find my house and you'll be in the area you'll hear you'll smell my food cooking you'll hear my music playing you'll see my kids playing but you'll never get a full concept and be invited into my home because you think my sh my house is the next street over. So when it comes to referencing your chart, it gets really, really complicated and astrology gets extremely convoluted. And so hopefully I just provide a voice of reason to say something different that's based on facts that we could observe is so old right you're able to look at the world in a matter of fact way based upon quantum physics okay so when i talk about vedic astrology i'm also talking about quantum physics i'm also talking about the microcosm that represents the macrocosm which are the planets the planets are the macro which are large the micro are the hormones and the glands aka chakras because the glands in our body are our chakras, gland chakras, gland chakra, gland chakra. They are synonymous, okay? So I don't believe in chakras. I think you got, I'm sorry. The word just came out of my mouth. Uh, you can balance your pineal gland, right? But that's your third eye chakra. So pineal gland is a real gland and your third eye chakra relates to that. And you, okay? And these are not the children of Akasha. And so this is the real war that's going down. Y'all don't realize it, but, you know, we got to talk about it and break it down. So January 10th, 221 p.m., there'll be what I what I have termed an Akasha lunar eclipse of the moon, where it's pre means that it's not going to be completely red because usually the sun is in front of the moon and the sun, no, the earth is in front of the moon and the sun shines through the earth and that reflection, that red hue that happens during a lunar eclipse or a blood moon is based upon the earth being in between the sun and the moon, okay? So that's what a lunar eclipse is. We have lunar eclipses every year, whether we know it or not. This is where the terms or the concepts come from new year's eve and new year's resolution based upon this annual solar lunar eclipse cycle every single year so the full moon is great for releasing energy that's a normal full moon but when you relate it to an akasha lunar eclipse you always so solar eclipses lunar eclipses are new moons full moons on steroids there are new moons full moons times 10. so we talked about the solar eclipse we talked about balancing our our hormones a lot of people you know this information is not me you know what i'm saying that's why i provide the links and the the, the web page because i'm not i'm researching this but I'm organizing the research in a way that it can be understood. But more importantly, if you don't understand your hormones, you can have all the money, have a have low testosterone, low serotonin, melatonin, out of whack. But all of the money, you understand how your life is hell with low testosterone, low estrogen, low melatonin. OK, all of the money in the world can't get your hormones together.
So if the solar eclipse is an external space, because another thing that we connected was that during the new moons, our melatonin spikes high research. You know what I'm saying? Got that research documented new moons our melatonin operates at a higher level full moons our melatonin is decreased and so since our melatonin is decreased we not as peaceful we not as happy we not you know dealing within that melatonin you know goodness akashic goodness so therefore we deal with the level of stress anxiety and that's how you like people go crazy during the full moons i would hate to be emotionally imbalanced and judging everybody outside of me for my emotional my hormonal imbalance okay so when we talk about the new moons when we talk about the full moons we're not really talking about the planets in the goddamn sky we talking about space and space is not empty. Space is a substance. It's called ether. Ether. Akasha. Okay? Akasha lives in the stars. It's massive, right? But within us, we have the same substance, the same massive. And the Akasha within us and the Akasha within the stars is a is is, is like a hmm. It's like a cell phone tower, right? So the cell phone tower holds all of the data between the calls, but within that cell phone is kind of like a miniature cell phone tower. It has all of the coding, all of the necessary shit to transmit messages back and forth between and within us. We have all of the necessary hormones and we not talking about your sister in the next room making love to her boyfriend. We not talking about them type of hormones, okay? We talking about our biological necessity to reproduce, to laugh, to 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 be conscious and aware, to hug, to be in joy, to be in bliss. You think you going to accomplish this by money and success and traveling across the world? But you, but you ain't even figured it out in your own damn bedroom. You ain't figured it out in your own damn living room. So don't think that something external is going to build up something internal. It just doesn't work like that. It starts with us in our understanding. So let's just read this quote. quote we absorb and emit light of the stars daily. So we absorb, right? We absorb the energy of the planets. We admit that same energy that we absorb is called correspondence. And that's detailed in my book. I can't wait for this book to come out. I can't wait to create content around this book because you like the lot of things that I've been saying recently is either going to be ignored or accepted. It's not going to be argued with. It's not going to be tore down because what I'm saying is part of a collective consciousness fact that I'm just the uh, air horn or the vessel or the channel for the divine. And I'm not the only one, it's not an egoic thing. There's a lot of, it's a lot of trading off that's experienced throughout the YouTube content, spiritual creator community where we build off each other. Okay. So we absorb the energy of the stars, which is our brethren, which is our sister. And all of this is going to connect when we deal with the lover's tarot card. But what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to discuss is a multi-level fact of life. And if you don't got the patience, if you got the ADHD, not to, you know, other shit going on, that's really, really, really cool with me. Because we got to deal with people who have the patience and the energy to sit and focus on something that matters to them. See, I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about the external world. I'm talking about balancing your hormones. I know that sounds crazy because you think hormones happen between 13, 14, 15, 16. Nah, that is the awakening, right? That is the 
conscious awakening that if we don't have a rite of passage, which we generally don't unless we're Jewish and we go through the bar mitzvah. But for the most part, we have no rites of patches, passage to teach us about our hormonal balance. So they just kick us out into the world, make this money. OK, get a job. OK, get a house, start a family. OK. But mama, daddy, grandma, what about my internal? If you don't get a job and get a house, none of that shit gonna matter. Okay, so we spend our life in the rat race and we never focus in on our internals for real and have the conversation that comes from this balance, that comes from the recognizing of the Vedic quantum physics, earth elements, spiritual, planetary influence. Cause then you'll have people online, spiritual people online that say none of this shit matters. It's like me saying that rain in California don't matter cause I live in Ohio. What we try to do is conceptualize the all or the, or the Akashic records within our conscious mind. And we can't do that. We can only live in the moment and learn to express the all. Like I can't express everything that I want to stay within the next 10 seconds. I have to kind of space it out and it has to kind of, I have to be present in everything that I'm saying and let it come. They are creative lights of our being through which we move back and forth. So we move back and forth. There's a song by Aaliyah called back and forth. It's actually her first song. And it's specific to the goddess because she starts it off with it's Friday. It's kind of like starting off the song back and forth with it's Friday is like me starting off, you know, I'm going to a restaurant and, you know, the, the chef comes out like it's the chef, you know, it's Friday, it's Frida, it's the goddess of freedom. You understand freedom the limitless boundless of what you could do. You ever be at a Wednesday thinking about Friday and how epic your weekend is about to be. <laughs> and that shit happened like, wow, <laughs> you know, it'd be like, damn, it's Sunday night already. That was 10 minutes. Cause, cause weekends are epic. Fridays are epic. Okay. So it's Friday. We going back and forth. We dealing with the Akasha. We dealing with Aaliyah, the naturally and spontaneous energy of the soul that dances between the finite and infinite. Our human life and our celestial life, our celestial life being found in the gland system that nobody can deny from pituitary, pineal, hypothalamus. OK, the sacral gland. You know, the perineum, these are all within your body that these glands need to be balanced and understood because these are your vehicles to Godhood. Souls dance between the finite and infinite. The planets merely cast energy. They only give energy. We make it positive or negative by our use of it. So the person would be like, what do you mean the planets cast energy? I want to disagree with you, Hood Mystic. The planets don't cast energy. I think you're full of shit. I think astrology's full of shit. And I would be like, you ever went outside? I'd be like, yeah, I went outside. And the sun beams down. Yeah, the sun beams down. Is it hot or cold or indifferent? It gets kind of warm when the sun comes out. Well, that's a planet and it's casting energy. Have you ever heard people say, damn, it's hot outside. Let me go back in the house. I can't stand this hot. Or you heard people say, damn, it's hot. Now we can throw our picnic. Now we can go to the amusement park. Now we can go to the beach. See the, the energy that the sun casts, it just is what we do with it is our responsibility the energy that the moon casts which is our hormonal balance let's get that understood 
So do the planets cast energy? Do you got hormones? Are you happy, sad? Do you have feelings? Are you depressed? What's your mood like? Okay. All of these things referenced by the sun. Are you sleeping? <laughs> Are you insomnia? You know, insomniac. Are you in love? You got a good job making that money. You ever been broke? All of these things represent particular energies that whether what we do with it or what we don't do with it. You ever had an opportunity and fucked it up? You ever had an opportunity and made the most of it? See, it's not what happens. It's always what we do with it. And what we do with it is a reference to how we feel within ourselves. When talking with people and dealing with people is almost like to the point where it's, it's aggravating because everybody, right, got a bad guy, got a boogeyman, and nobody can look within themselves these inner mistakes because I've personally realized that, okay, what's holding me back is me. There are things that I could be doing personally that I could step up. I could remove. I could do a lot of things better, family. So I can't be talking about YouTube holding me back. I can't be talking about, damn, they, they hating on me. They not giving me my views and all of that shit. I need to step my shit up. You know what I'm saying? Period. If I step my shit up, that's all that can be required of me. And whatever happens out of that, I know that I've done the work to make me a better person. If I'm making me a better person, I'm focusing on my internals. There is no boogeyman. See, we want to put a boogeyman on our exes, our futures, our passes, our present. But what about our inner reflection? Do we deal with the God within? Or do we just look at the external as our God? The real break in consciousness. So we dealing with twins. We established that the moon is is in the is in the constellation of gemini for those who just join in alive the full moon is in taurus <laughs> niggas always no matter what y'all know what it's like to be talking about something to be proving something to be showing something and somebody with no knowledge just hop in like no it's actually in taurus what we just zooming in showing see this is a two heads that's what Gemini look like. You've probably never seen it. And I'm sorry if it's, ooh, computer going dumb. Dumb, dumb. Probably going to freeze up. Sorry about that. Oh, let me clear this out. That's the problem. All right. So the two heads of Gemini, the two arms, the arms coming together. Arms, pelvic two legs two twins hopefully y'all can see that clearly hopefully it ain't freezing you see the moon and the date january 10th 220 america new york that's a standard eastern standard time moon is in gemini just want to so when i start talking about these twins and this gemini stuff this is a long video too i'm kind of just like this video is me sitting on my couch with my feet up, you feel me, arms behind my head, because I feel like this is how I need to come today. Usually I'm uptight and just trying to be like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I don't feel that today. I feel so free to just be me, right? This is a full moon conjunct my natal moon, right? So lunar eclipse. More so, I have to expect that my soul will not forsake me. And if I trust in my soul and I trust in my hormonal balance, I can sit here in front and say, I'm doing my meditations. I'm balancing my shit out. I'm writing and I'm doing this, that, and the third. That don't matter. I got to actually be doing that shit. Got to actually be interfacing with my twin. So the Abiji are the sacred, are the sacred twins. Gemini when dealing with astrology is correlated to the Abiji. The word Abiji is composed of two words, EB and Eji. EB means to be born. Eji means two. 
when dealing with the sacred science of the Ibeji, equated to understanding of twins. Twins represent complementing and opposing polarities. They represent gateways. This is the reason the number 11 is considered to be the tower or the twin tower, okay? So twin tower 11, Aaliyah, we got a lot of dots to connect, okay? We got a lot of dots to connect. And while this on the former of my mind, we gonna just, we just gonna do this. The original World Trade Center was a large complex of seven buildings in the financial district of Lower Manhattan. Lower Manhattan, if y'all been following Truth is Stranger Than Fiction, we've been dealing with that concept a lot. New York City, United States, it happened on April 4th, it opened on April 4th, 1973. It was destroyed 2001 during September 11 attacks. So, this might not seem significant, but we'll connect it later. Just remember this, okay? Aaliyah passed away August 25th, 2001 in the Bahamas. So we're talking a lot about Aaliyah. I'm just bringing up the background, but the Twin Towers 11, her passing away 2001, and then within how many days? Is it between August 25th and so 17 days between August 25th to September 11th. So anytime you hear towers or the number 11, it is speaking of gateways. DNA strands also forms the number of 11. So just keep all of this in mind as we kind of progress through the reading. Um, so we like to deal with Sabian symbols in Vedic astrology to give us kind of a deep understanding of what where the moon is at with to the degree on both sides. So the sun is at Gemini 25, a cave in deep waters. And then the sun is at 25 Dylan, a small boat with no one in it, gradually drifting out to sea. So we got those two things. We have a cavern of deep water, and then we have a small boat. So within our mental imagery, right? Close, close your eyes if you're not driving. You have a small boat, and then you have a cavern. So obviously, the goal is to get that small boat that's drifting out to sea to that cavern of deep water and still using our mental imagery, that boat with no one in it is just the human and that cavern of deep waters is our past lifetimes. Now reincarnation is law. You do not believe in reincarnation then this world does not make no sense to you. You think that is all about your race. You think that it's all about your gender. You think it's all about your nationality. You think it's all about this human shit. Okay. But the fact of the matter is the truth is in your DNA. The truth is in your past lifetimes. The truth is in your spiritual understanding. So this lunar eclipse for individuals in the mundane they are going through world war three they have no spiritual component they don't have nothing else to do besides fight besides war they don't seek peace right there's no way that the powers that be, the dominant society, the majority could ever establish peace within the world because they do not have peace within themselves. And that goes across all races, creeds, nationalities. Nobody is dealing with the energy of self. It's always this group politics in the space of 
since I'm messed up, everybody got to be messed up. So I only can project the war that's going on within me to, to everybody else. What's going on within me personally, though, is a synthesization of soul and human. I swear to God, like I swear to everything on everything I'm love or everything I love. I'm not the same Kyrie that I used to be so far from I'm so far from Kyrie. I don't even know who that guy is. OK. All I know is what this new person seeks. This new person seeks knowledge and information and wants to work and love and give. OK. Kyrie was selfish, hurt, sad, and figured that somebody owed him some shit. That he was going to get what was owed because the world had done him wrong. But the problem is Kyrie did his self wrong by not synthesizing with his goddamn soul. OK. Hmm. So this is the reality of ancestors, previous lifetimes collective consciousness showing up. So if all of these things are showing up and you're just this individual and you have this life path and you did your astrology chart and you did got a reading and you, you know, you did a spell for what you personally think that you need or want out of life, but you're not even putting the work in. <laughs> It'd be different if you put it the work in and just focus on it day for day and just hoping, not even hoping, just manifesting as the days go on. But that ain't even the case. People want to be saved by Jesus out here in these streets. Like for real. And it's not, and you think, well, I'm not a, I don't go to church. Nah, y'all, we, we, we idolizing these spiritual spewers without doing any work without doing any work without establishing any cognizance of self so if anything <laughs> take a little quick break not a break at all i'm not even taking a break i just want y'all to subscribe and um <laughs> Just understand that being confused about this shit is normal and is good. What's troubling right now is if you niggas know stuff, y'all know shit. Now, oh my God, I got to move away from you. I'm not even going to talk to you, right? <laughs> I'm not even going to talk to you in 2020 if you know some shit. If we can't come to a consistency, if we can't come to learn some stuff, right? Ev like everything has to be relearned. So these these pundits, these spiritual people who know, right? I can't rock with you. I'm confused. I have to do research. I have to learn. I have to figure this shit out. And I'm not saying that I'm the leader of this, but I'm saying that the only type of knowing that people are possessing is ignorance. They they know that they're ignorant, but they can't show that they're ignorant. So this has to be this false veneer of security, knowledge, and I know what's happening. People can be like, you know, I'm spiritual, I'm God. And then in the next moment, be like, they out to get us. <laughs> They go, they kidnapping us and then be like, I'm the most spiritual person on the internet. But these dark entities be trying to stop me and be like, hold on. If you manifest everything from within and you God, why the hell is you manifesting dark entities? It's like, you're not connecting those dots. So, uh, part of it is learning how to understand how to be a goddamn God. Okay. You are gods and all of you are children of the most high. So that's Psalms 82, six. But even though the Bible tells you that you are gods, it also gives you instructions on how to be God. 
it gives you instructions on how to be God. And this is called revelation. Revelation means to re hold on. We got the internet. So let's not, let's not, not use the internet. What does revelation mean? Google. A surprising and previously unknown fact. It's a whole book. <laughs> it's a whole book in the Bible full of surprising and previously unknown facts. And if you haven't broken it down, if you haven't explained it, I broke down like the first seven chapters on my YouTube channel. It got like 10 views on those videos. <laughs> got 10 views on trying to break down the Kundalini and showing you the revelations of the Bible and stuff like that. That don't, that don't, that don't interest us. Raising the Kundalini, that don't interest us. But if I had a video talking about how to make money, how to get love, how to get all of this existentialist bullshit. That's not surprising, nor that's not previously unknown. What I'm trying to present is something that is more of a revelation. When I say that you are gods, there is a protocol to godhood. And then once we establish this protocol and have this conversation, then we can grow from it. There's a couple of things that got to happen. We got to learn how to learn. We got to learn how to teach because learning ain't fixed and finite. Everybody has a different learning style and teaching and part of what I'm teaching and writing my books, I'm trying to teach you how to utilize certain things, not trying to make it be about, you got to listen to what I'm saying. I'm trying to show you if you do this, this is what it happened. So the full moon is at the Puna Ver Punar Vasu Nishakra. We still dealing with astrology. We still dealing with astrology. That's why people be like, I don't really deal with astrology. It don't make sense. It ain't real. I'm like, whoa, you obviously didn't research it and deal with it at its core principles. Kind of like if I, if you show me a math problem and it's like, all right, I got two uh, pill bottles be always in front of me. So I got two pills, right? And I put one pill bottle, I put two pills together and another two pills and I count them out and it's four. And I come to the agreement that it's four within myself. But then you show me like, nah, man, two plus two equals five. I'd be like, huh? And you don't even explain the shit. You just be like two plus two equals five. Be like, how do you know this? Because my teacher showed me the answer key. My astrologer said it. <laughs> My astrologer said that the full moon was in Taurus. That's not actually proof, bro. Can we can we all look at a telescope a satellite right now or utilize a website that has telescopic features? And can we bear witness that the full moon will be in Taurus or Gemini? And now if we all bear witness that the full moon is in Gemini, then we have to come to that consensus. And if we look at it in Gemini and still ascertain that it's in Taurus, then we are really under deep mind control by the millions. It's scary to me as much as I see people talk about astrology and the avoidance of sight real and the avoidance of Vedic. That's crazy to me, but we talking about it here. The Punar Vasu Nashatra is symbolized as a quiver of arrows. The lunar mansion of the Punarvasana Chakra is where this eclipse occurs and the meanings of it are swift movement, travel and transport. Like I said, this is the Nashakra that I was born under. So if my moon is conjunct in Western astrology is 19 degrees of cancer, but in uh, Vedic astrology, it is 25 degrees of uh, 25, 26 degrees of Gemini. But this, but if it's my moon in this nishatra is not going to represent my external normal life. Where this energy shows up at, uh, swift movement, travel, transport is in my dreams. I'm always traveling in my dreams. Like I'm traveling in my dreams. All I do is travel. I be in your dreams, her dreams, they dreams, my mama dreams, my girl's dreams, my kids dreams. 
I am a astro traveler. Okay. This is my moon though. My moon is not my sun. My moon governs my night. So when trying to understand your moon sign, you don't govern it by the shit that you do during the day. You wouldn't understand it. You can really understand it. If you understand your night patterns, you like to go out and dance and kick it and you know, do you extra freaky at night? The music sounds a little bit better and different at night because the moon takes over. So as this energy takes over during a lunar eclipse, we reference this energy during a lunar eclipse because what happens is that the earth is in the way of the solar transmission and that earth energy reflects on the moon. It's kind of like this. You ever watch the movies <laughs> and it'd be like the main star is the moon, right? The is like at the end of the movie, the moon is like about to, you know, get killed by the bad guy, which is the sun. And then at the last minute, the magical Negro steps in the earth, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> it gets shot. You know what I'm saying? But that energy that comes off of me, which is the earth or the heart, is now transported into our subconscious mind. And so it's more or less like a literal sacrifice of the heart, sacrifice of the earth, which is a lunar eclipse, if you really think about it. But Hunar Vasu is the star of renewal. It means purifying, cleansing. It also means revolution. And it also is an enig from obscurity to radiance. All of these things represent, I can relate to this shit. Right. This is my natal nishakra. I came from one thing. Now I'm to another thing. That's enigmatic. However, the deity or the presiding deity of this nishakra is a deity, which is the mother of gods. So we have the twins, right? The twins are a manifestation. A deity is the mother or the cosmic womb for this birth. And when the, you reference the Gemini, you are referencing a human being. The difference between a human being and an animal is the fact that we have a twin consciousness that gives us the ability to be aware, to be present, to be intelligent, to, to imagine that we live in this world. A lot of animals don't have that option or ability to imagine themselves in relation or in correspondence to a whole universe, a whole cosmic plan. Just like shit, I just need to eat, sleep. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people is living on that animalistic level where they don't understand the relation to Aditi. So the children of Aditi have this ability to connect to the cosmics. And this represents Gemini, the twin energy. The twin that we reference is unseen, it's spiritual, it is our soul. This is Gemini, but you don't have twins without a mother. So mother twins, mother twins, mother twins, mother twins. Okay, that's what this Nishakra is trying to tell us. And this is old, old, old stuff, right? But there's also remixes and flips. And you know what this energy is by transferring the wordage and the verbiage and seeing who tried to remix and flip it because they have an interpretation of it so we can oh i see what you is doing because when we talk about movies entertainment they ain't talking about nothing but stars right stars right they don't call them couches or pieces of wood or houses they call them stars because they represent mythological figures they represent the actual beings or entities or 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 incarnations of a deity. Not a deity, but a deity. So to preface this or to give you a good standing, if you don't understand about reincarnation, then none of this shit gonna make sense to you. None of this shit gonna make sense to you because right now we had a like you honestly think that when you came out of your mom's vagina, you was just now created. Like this is your first time on this planet. That's just not the case. Probably your 15,000th time on this planet. 
trapped in the wheels of uh reincarnation because you don't understand the 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 spiritual significance of who you are and the cosmic mother and the just the whole astrological gambit of this that's why it's people that's presenting this information now so we can become become begin to be aware so aditi is the personification of the in and infinite she is the goddess of the sky consciousness past future and fertility as a celestial mother existing form and being the synthesis of all things she is associated with space akasa and with mystic speech vak okay so aditi is a twin within herself of akasha and vak okay so what is akasha akasha means the basis the basis or essence of all things in the material world it is the first element created so space is not empty space is a substance it is the first substance and it and it created everything that we built upon it is the unified ether that exists like like it's just something that it's a spiritual primal canvas for all of life to be built upon and as we build upon it it becomes more complex and more defined within a different realm. But if we took everything back to its basis, essence, we're dealing with Akasha. Okay. The Akashic records or the Akashic library is referring to an etheric compendium of all knowledge and history that, that resides within our DNA. This is, this basically is DNA, the Akashic records. Now, Vak, a lot of people don't understand Vak and Akasha are twins or synonymous with each other. They go together is a goddess of personified or a personified form of speech. She inspires poets, visionaries, and gives expression to energy to those she loves. She is the stated wife of vision, the mother of emotions and the friend of musicians. Okay. So that's Vak, the goddess or the personification of speech. So this gets me into why I'm featuring Aaliyah in this conversation. One for Akasha and two for Vak. Because Akasha and Vak are the twins from Aditi. But Aditi, Akasha, and Vak are one. Hope that makes sense. Akasha is the space and Vak is the word. And what do they say in the Bible about the word? In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Let's do this again. In the beginning was the Vak and the Vak was with Akasha and the Akasha was Vak or some form or fashion to that. But we're talking about space and words. Like the world operates off of it. What we say and how much our words hold power. And then you talk about somebody like Aaliyah who let's deal with this real quick. So you don't think it's off the I'm going off the deep ends. The mystic, you're losing me, brother. You're going so far off the deep end. How y'all feeling? How is y'all feeling? So. Just want to show something. Aaliyah. Dana Houghton was an American singer born in Brooklyn, Kings County, and raised in Detroit, where my wife from. She first gained recognition at the age of 10, which is the number of God, when she appeared on a television show, 
Star Search. Who else was on this show? It's a lot of people, but this is just. So Beyonce was on star search as well, meaning that they really searching for the particular stars. They really searching for the particular energy, not because they sing so great and their vibes are so strong or even that they so pretty is much deeper. That's what we got to really talk about when we understand the symbol is like it. Either you gonna understand the symbolism and what they're trying to say, or it's going to go over your head. But then when you keep getting your head bust, and you keep feeling a certain type of way about shit and you don't know how to connect to other energy other than your own selfish understand mythology and the spirituality. So the queen of the dam, the queen of the dam is a 1988 horror novel by American writer Anne Rice. This movie deals with the origins of vampires themselves. Akasha and the Queen of the Dam had a husband named Enkil. Enkil and Akasha were rulers of Kemet, now Egypt, around 4000 BC. So long story short, there were these twins. So we connect Akasha to Maharet and Makari, were the twin sisters who eventually become Akasha when Akasha is dead. And you also see this in Captain Marvel. When Marvel is murdered, then what the Vedas and the quantum physics present. And if you understand Vedic astrology and you understand the quantum physics, then you can watch anything and break it down because they're not telling a different story. They're not telling a different story and we could we could talk about it, but the Marvel Cinematic Universe is basically Vedic science one-on-one, -on -one, okay? All of those superhero characters are the gods and goddesses, the Asuras, and the Divas. That's it. That's it. So, I don't know why. I, I just watched Captain Marvel last night, can y'all tell? <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, so... These twins, Maharet and Makari, are somewhat connected to Akasha somehow, some way. Right? And then, and I'm talking about the book. I'm not talking about the story. Because in the movie, none of this is detailed. But in the book, the central theme to the story is about twins. Okay? Read the book. It's about Maharet and Makari, because at the end of the Queen of Damned, Maharet is the one who absorbs the, the power. One side of the twins, because Maharet and Makari represent one. They represent the human. I hope y'all hear me, bro. Like, I really, 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 really hope y'all hear me. And maybe if it, I'm a, when I get finished, I'm a, like, if you got a question, write it down. Cause maybe them questions can help me explain it to you and other people. Like, how does this connect to now? Well, January 16th, they're re releasing all of Aaliyah's music. Meaning it's gonna be a point in time, not now, where Aaliyah is going to be a trending topic within this week. I know that for a fact. Because there's no way that all of these correspondences are going to happen. And if I did not study Vedic astrology, I would not even get to this point. Would have never even got to this point. I would have never, when I read about the Nishakra and it talks about Aditi, and Aditi is represented of Akasa and Vak, and Vak is mystic speech. And Akasha is all space, but Akasha is also Akasha from the Queen of the Damned. Okay. And Queen of the Damned is played by Aaliyah. Okay. You see? You see? There's no way. With, like, And then 
it's like I don't even know what Akasha represents. I don't even know what Vok understands, but I do know I do understand the impact of Aaliyah. Star Search at 10, record deal by 13, international superstar by 15, movies, just everything. And it was like whatever she wanted. And it was an energy that everybody could feel. More than her being a hot R&B artist and one of the best R&B artists and going too soon, she was a living God, a living deity. And the science of deities, <sighs> there is no one person, we are all a collective when they kill akasha they kill all of us and i'm like what because from there they was able to execute 9 11 17 days later you want to talk about trauma you want to talk about pain see this is a trauma and a pain that goes beyond arguments with your baby daddy don't nobody care about that shit. Don't nobody care that your daddy left you. Don't nobody care nothing about your personal struggle. That's not real trauma. The real trauma is when they attack and kill the gods. Okay. When they kill the gods, they kill you too. Okay. So in August of 2001, the queen of the dam was cast by Aaliyah Dana Hart. And I'm going to prove that. Aaliyah is a god in the flesh just by her name alone, okay? But let's get to that. In the title role, Akasha, the film decided to focus on Lestat as the primary as the primary character in the backstory of Akasha and the stories of Maharet and Makari, which were twins, were omitted, despite these being virtually central to the plot of the novel. Aaliyah had all but finished her role when she passed away in a plane crash in the Bahamas. Interesting enough, the, the, the perceived, they thought that she died in a plane crash, Captain Marvel, but she didn't. She got absorbed into a secret society called the Cree, K-R-E-E. -E. My name is Kyrie, so I just be asking why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Uh, K Y R E E K R E E and just why like why right? But anyways, we <laughs> we gonna move forward. Uh, Aaliyah. So Aaliyah is really Ali, Yah. Okay, Ali, Yah. Okay, Yah means God, the Most High. Ali means the Most High. Dana, and this is across the whole entire country. I mean, the whole entire planet, Ali is like Muhammad Ali type deal. Ali, yeah, you know, so Ali, yeah, Arabic, American, African, Hebrew. How would it be Afri <laughs> How could it be all four of those things in origin? So in Irish mythology, Danu, in modern Irish, Dana, so Danu, Dana, Danu, Dana, Danu, Dana, is hypothetical mother goddess of Tuatha De Deanon, the people of the goddess Danu. Now, these are Dana. You represent an archetype of that fairy godmother, and these fairies are usually found at the mounds. Tuatha De Anon literally means mound. I'm not, because if I'm not. I think these means like the people of the mound, but let's just see. A tribe of gods. Hold on, we gonna get into this, but real quick. <laughs> the Tuatha Danan were led underground into the Sidhi Mounds by such, or whatever. So the Sidhi Mounds are the actual place where these, enter these entities reside. So these are unseen entities. These entities can't be seen with the naked eye, but you go to these mounds and you interface with these entities, whether you in America or whether you in England, Scotland, Africa, 
Asia, South America, the Bahamas, anywhere you go where you see earthen burial mounds, these are the energies that rise reside over it. And Aaliyah being, you know, probably the king of that actual energy. The Tuatha Danan are the ain't no much. It ain't it ain't that complicated. You want to complicate it based upon your Christian upbringing, but past that, it get really really simple. The tribe of the gods. Okay, that's what that's what we are. If you are a child of a deity, if you do represent the Vedas, if you understand this unified field of consciousness and how to manifest any and all things based upon the utilizing utilization of space and ether. Now, space and ether and utilization of quantum physics and doing all of this stuff is possible, but you too worried about your personal bullshit to get to that level, period. You too, you too, you too riled up in legal fictions to even deal with the truth of your internal dialogue and your processes. Because what's going on with you personally is, pri is primary. You know what I'm saying? You could give a shit about anybody else, but we all are a collective unison of one. You want to stun on us and shine on us instead of connecting and collecting with us. A little different. Want to be the boss or the leader. Too many chiefs, not enough Indians, so forth and so on. Akasha is the sacred Sanskrit or sacred word meaning ether in its elemental and metaphysical sense. So in the reality, we live in a world surrounded by ether, but in a sense of manifesting and learning how to deal with the metaphysical, our primary energy is that of ether. How are we going to paint if we don't have a canvas? A deity is the force that is responsible for creation and death on the external plane of infinitude, the Akasa. So life and death in the process of reincarnation is going through Aditi and Akasha. I'm just trying to bring it on home and make sense of it, of why I'm even talking about this shit today and why I'm going so long. And so why I'm just talking about it, because I'm trying to explain the time, place, setting, energy. So you're not confused. You turn up the Aaliyah and you vibe the fuck out, period. You don't do nothing. I've been listening to one in a million. I've been listening to age ain't nothing but a number. I've been listening to I care for you. I've been listening to the Anastasia soundtrack trying to take my ass home. You feel me home. That shit. It give you chills. Listen to Aaliyah sing home live. I think at the Grammys or some shit. <laughs> game changer. Okay. Aaliyah is a game changer. The energy is a game changer and, and, and more so beyond Aaliyah, you know how like in Captain Marvel where they was like, what the hell is your name? Verge? Like who the fuck is Verge? Hey, who the hell is Verge? Your girl, your name is, what was her name? Um, Carol, <laughs> Carol, what the hell you talking about? Your name ain't Carol, your name Verge. <laughs> like, so basically it ain't necessarily Aaliyah. It ain't necessarily Akasha. But it's Aditi, the mother of all gods. Okay. They wouldn't have cast her in the role of Akasha if she wasn't Akasha. They could have did. They could have did um you could see Angela Bassett being Akasha. You could see um who else could you see? The girl from How to Do Murder and Get Away with It. I don't know what the name of that show is, but y'all know what I'm talking about. She could be Akasha. Um, she was in a movie with Denzel. Viola Davis. Yeah, she could be Akasha. It could be so many different actors, actresses rather, that could be Akasha. So in order to play and be Akasha, you had to literally be Akasha. Okay. Cause in the movie, she got killed. In real life, she got killed. Almost synonymous. And she sung on the soundtrack to Anastasia. And there's a character named Rasputin or Rasputin that dies the same way as Akasha. So Aaliyah sung on that soundtrack, had the lead single, then was the main actress for Akasha. So Akasha, Rasputin, the plane crash, Bahamas, all of this stuff. It's like 
stranger than fiction when you do your research. And then, like, man, I could go, trust me, I could go way more deeper than I'm going. I could talk way more longer than I'm talking. Um, but I hope this is not boring. And I hope this is uh, interesting. And I hope this is like new information. And I hope it confuses the hell out of you. I hope you confuse as hell. Because I would hate to give you a false sense of security and some shit that's not even secure. This requires work, research, and connecting the dots. And I can't be the only goddamn person that connect the dots. We got to connect these got dots together. So to start afresh after having once broken off to start a new life, to come back from a distant land, all these are significant are significant by Panarva. The children of Aditi are basically and essentially are different from the children of DT who are demons. So I'm gonna do that sentence again because I read like a third grader. The gods, the children of Aditi, the children of Akasha, the children of Vak are basically and essentially different from the children of DT who are demons. So why are they different? How, what makes them different? The demons never had a taste of divine nectar, melatonin, serotonin, testosterone, imbalance working for you. You get in the sex you want, you feel the way that you want to feel, you sleep the way you want to sleep, you are in your circadian rhythm, your manifestations is in alignment, you love your family, you love your life because you love your yourself, right? Your, your hormonal balance. It's people on this earth, no matter how much money they get, no matter how hard they work, no matter how much they try, you never heard of a about to go get this surgery, get my pineal gland, <laughs> get my pineal gland processing right. <laughs> Gotta get, you know, you be getting them glands removed. I hear about people getting their thyroid gland removed. You know, you never hear about it. You know, it, it, it always calcifies or dies out or let us remove your prostate gland <laughs> let's you don't need that shit nigga. <laughs> uh, drink all this fluoride nigga. you don't need that pineal gland what you trying to do channel your ancestors nigga. drink this fluoride <laughs> okay because the children of deity they never had a taste of divine nectar and therefore missed the knowledge of fundamentals, the fundamentals of creation and mystery. So if you're not leaving this conversation confused and trying to create something or trying to learn the mysteries of your hormonal balance, you just know everything. Nah, see, I hear what you're saying about the hormones. You've been saying it a lot, huh, Mystic? It's making a lot of sense, but for real, for real, I just need this money. For real, for real, I just need to take this trip to Cuba so I can be on my resort and not really travel and see the city or the, 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 the continent. Just sit on my resort, look at the ocean, feel it, take some pictures for the gram, of course. I have to stunt on these niggas. <laughs> I have to stunt on these niggas, right? They were engrossed with or deeply emerged in the enjoyment of the externals and materialistic aspect of the universe. The reality is y'all sitting next to making love to <laughs> y'all just love the children of DT, the external ass people. They, they present a world of such fantastic we're going to do this. We're going to be this and we're going to get this. And then it's like, well, what are we going to do to balance our internals? Like, man, sometimes you just got to rub on your girl's butt. You know what I'm saying? Not like sometimes you got to not want to have sex with your girl. Save that energy. Sometimes like if I don't like sometimes I'll go a whole week and not have sex. But then when I get intimate, it's not like I'm not not touching or not embracing or not having intimate relationships with my wife is more so that I like the way I like the way that I feel once my um I'm gonna just sit like once my uh what's the word testosterone get built up I don't be releasing I just be just kind of chilling doing research and then it's like 
Yeah, it's been a couple of days, right? Like a few days. I'm a, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, because my horror, like, so women, if yo, like, how do you feel? Like, sometimes, like, being with women, it's like, okay, some women feel as though sex is a passive act. But if you ever got your woman, like, turned up, you know what I'm saying? Like, charged up, and she just want to give it. And then it's not always like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's not it's not about you. It's about her. And it's not about him. It's about, you know what I'm saying? It's about the partner or the individual's energy that they bring in towards sex. And the, the real thing is when y'all both are able to bring that hormonal balance to the sexual relationship. Why are you talking about sex, hood mystic? I'm talking about the lovers. So here we got and kill. And Akasha, the uh, first vampires, okay? And I just, I'm going to finish this up. Been talking to y'all for a while. Really appreciate y'all time, energy. And once I get through with this, I'm going to check the chat out, see if there's any questions. Hope y'all was able to hear me clearly. Hope I was lucid enough to make sense. Um, you know, nothing's perfect when you go live, and I expect that, but... You know, I just try to make sure that I'm able to be heard and understood. And if I'm not understood, if I'm not heard, I trust that y'all tell me, Hood Mystic, what the fuck is you talking about, nigga? You sound crazy. I need that type of energy because I need, <laughs> I don't want to ever be a type of person that's like, you know, not able to explain the shit that I'm talking about. So to finish up, the card of the week is the lovers. The Lovers is ruled by Gemini. The Lovers is a card that represents multiple levels. Love exists on multiple levels. There's Philos, Agape, and some other stuff. But within the element of love, within the element of the Lovers card, you can all find yourself. It's not always about a relationship, but it definitely is. It's never about living in a vacuum and just kind of be like, I don't need people. I like to be alone. I like to be alone. I don't need anybody. No, you need to learn how to get over yourself <laughs> and learn how to contribute to a relationship because a relationship is not a passive act. The best relationships is when both or all three or all four or all 4,000 of us are giving to this shit. I ain't trying to be in no group where somebody is sitting and waiting for the results of me. Like I can sit back and be like, all right, what did you bring into the table? What did you, what did you, what did you saying? Cause that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, you gotta be receptive. You gotta give, you gotta understand. Oh, I've been giving, giving, giving. What have I gotten from giving? Not a damn thing. All right. This ain't a loving situation. This is slavery. I'm moving on. We could all find ourselves relating on how we find ourselves within this Akasha lunar eclipse. So where are you in the scale of love? At the first level of this lunar eclipse, we're dealing with choice. Who do you want to be with and why do you want to be with them? You know, but this is a part about honesty. I want to be with this person because I'm benefited by them. Well, that's not a real reason to be with somebody. That's not a real reason to be with somebody. It's not a real reason to be with somebody. You, you it's an easy way to be with somebody because I'm benefited with them. And then when they stop benefiting with me, I got to rewrite and regroup and do all types of crazy shit with my life because this person is not benefiting me. Because you based it on a person benefiting you. It's not really love in the space of the lover's card. And so if you waiting for an ideal situation, why don't you create it? <laughs> why don't you create it? I've been listening to a lot of Hindu. I'm getting that act a little better. It's over. I think I might just scrap this channel. Just be from India. <laughs> Just talk like this. I need to work on it. But I'm going to get there. At the second level, it is representing the inner life as opposed to what you do. 
So I'm an actor, I'm a comedian, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a this, I'm a that. But that don't got shit to do with your hormonal balance. That don't got shit to do with your internal kundalini, raising up, spiritual awakening, spiritual awareness. That got everything to do with your mind control, your ability to not keep control of yourself, your ADHD, your mental problems, your inability to establish or maintain or keep long-term relationships that are fulfilling because it's not what you do. Nobody gives a shit about your college degree, how much money you got. It all it all amounts to how do you make a person feel? What can you contribute to that person's life to, you know, provide value? And if you all up into what you got and what you do, 10 times out of 10, you're not providing that person no value other than the illusion of what they think you might give them by being with them. But when it get down to the reality, ain't shit there. Cause it ain't what you do. It's your inner life. It's your hormonal balance. I keep saying that shit, huh? Yeah, you do. You need to come up with a different word. Okay. I'll work on it for the next video. <laughs> if there are forms of expression you are suppressing, then what do you do to suppress it is more harmful than if you would let it out. So the drug usage, the partying, the masturbation, right right the porn right <laughs> i don't need a man but i watch porn i don't need a girl but i watch porn like what <laughs> you suppressing the fact but we gonna leave that alone at the third level it is representing the connection between self and god so the lovers is loving your soul like the man and woman is not an actual man and woman on the lover's card. It's actually the individual and the soul, which ties into the Gemini theme. We all Geminis. Okay. We all are Geminis. And if you a twin, you a quadruplet. And you got, you a triplet, then you a sextuplet. You know what I'm saying? Because every person is two people. But if I can't talk to you about your shadow, then I ain't going to talk to you. Because <laughs> you're going to come at me like your shadow don't exist. But then I'm going to just kind of watch you kind of trip and fall and stumble and trip and fall and stumble. And be like, what's going on, bro? Nothing. I'm just out here being perfect. And these niggas is trying to stop me. <laughs> they trying to stop you, bro. Yeah, they holding me back. <laughs> okay. Okay. I see your shadow, though. Punching you in the back of your neck. <laughs> Putting you in a goddamn sleeper hole and you talk about the enemy. But I'm looking, I'm seeing your shadow. Oh, he just DDT'd you. Shit. <laughs> that wasn't nobody, bro. That was yourself. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, man. So 2020, right? People present themselves to you as having their shit together. Run. Because 2020, if people are not dealing with their psychology, they're not dealing with their shadow. We've been talking about this shit for 2017, 2018, the dark night of the soul, and all of this shit we've been building upon, right? Building upon it. Getting it out of our system. Because now, this is what everybody going to be doing. Oh, it's a war. It's a whole world war out here. What is we going to do? <laughs> no, nah, nigga, what is you going to do? At the fourth level, it represents brotherhood and sisterhood, uniting with souls at a cause level, not just a primal and sexual level. Really happy that we haven't took it to that level, YouTube. <laughs> we haven't took it to that level. We united at a cause level. We don't get into the sexual, bexual. Uh-uh. Brotherhood, let's zoom, let's give you some screen love on this. Brotherhood and sisterhood. Now, um, give me 30 seconds. I want to see if y'all got any questions. If y'all don't, I'm gonna read these chats and um I'll be back in 30 seconds. Guess who's bizarre? ColumbianExchange.com, the freshest drip on the internet. Shirts with a spell is now live. Go to Colombian Exchange with an X. 
www.thelastplace.com or click the link in the description. The new line, last place. The last shall be first before a limited time only. 20% for all subscribers with the code 2020. Colombian Exchange is back. Get there now. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell if you haven't already to be notified all of the times I go live. I appreciate all of y'all supports. A lot of people on here. Um, what is going on? I don't, I'm not even connected to my chat. That's crazy. They be. <sighs> See if. <clears throat> Here we go. Any questions? How y'all feeling? Any questions? Any questions? Getting on the chat right now. I'm done with my presentation. What y'all think about the, the presentation? All of the times I. No doubt. Go to Colombian Exchange too. That's a that's a that's a real thing. Get some drip, you know. Support this channel. What I would like to say is like this job <laughs> of what I do, it don't be it, it ain't it ain't fire. It don't be <laughs> the finances be crazy, bro. Like <laughs> it'd be crazy. I be it's, it's more of a personal thing. Like, damn, why is you working so hard? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody giving you shit for this. And that's some inner shit. I guess that's some shadow shit that I'm working through. But, you know, it's a lot of different things that I'm going to do. Uh, but, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, Leah is the voyage the Jews make home. And both Aaliyah and Talia sang Journey to the Past, singing Bring Back Bring Me Back Home. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that was in Anastasia. Watch that video, um, Bring Me Back Home by Leah at the Grammys. Okay, that's a good question, Stray. Um, can you go into the Sabian symbolism and the astrological um, path working? So Sabian symbolism, it helps us understand the astrology in terms. I think that's probably going to be the next thing that I kind of do is examine each and every Sabian symbol within the chart. There are 30 Sabian symbols for each constellation. So 12 times 30. There's 360 Sabian symbols within the astrological chart. And they go from the really simple to the really abstract. And the whole purpose of them is to get us to really think about astrology from a mental imagery perspective. So when we reference symbolism and we reference astrology, the first word of astrology is astral meaning our astral body or our mental body. And so when we think about astrology, it's not like Taurus means this cup with coffee in it. And so every time I see a cup with coffee in it, I think about Taurus. It don't really work like that. So I put out a book, How to Read Natal Charts Easily and Effectively. And it's a lot of space for you to write, meaning that if you go online, if you get a reading for somebody, they're only going to give you words and definitions and understandings from the best of their ability. But nine times out of 10, it might not have shit to do with you. Even if I'm telling it to you, I got to tell it to you in a way that you can process it because all of this shit happens in your mind. Okay. The mental body ties into the cabalion. All is mind straight. All is mind. So when we're using our mind to understand ourselves, we are dealing with our 
higher self concept. So sun, Venus, Mars, and things of that nature are just words for understanding our primary action, our primary thoughts, our primary emotion, our God level understanding. And if we have a mental image of that understanding based upon experience, damn, I always find girls like this. I always be in places like this. I'm always, why don't this happen? You break your astrology down in your words with your mental images, then you start to create a situation. If you look online, that shit 50, 50, you get a reading that shit 50, 50 to be honest. Like I do reading. So I like, it's not even to say like, Oh, I might have to give you your money back. If it don't resonate with you, you feel me? Like that's how it goes. Like if it don't resonate, if it's not right and exact, then I'll give you your money back. Cause it's, it's like, it has to, it has to trigger your mind to start thinking about yourself at a God level, you know, or you could just masturbate it like, ah, the sun, I'm a Virgo. I'm a cancer. I'm a this, I'm a that I'm a da, 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 da. As far as I'm concerned, as far as my channel, those questions need to really be researched and every year. You know, we deal with these constellations, transits and things of that nature. We just try to go a little bit deeper to get a little bit more understanding as the transits go. Yeah, the stars and everything related to um, the nishaktras are related to deities. There are deities that preside over every nishaktra, which gives you a deeper understanding of that placement within the chart. So it's not easy, nor is it going to be simply by looking at it like, oh, cancer means this. Like what degree, what symbol, what nishaktra? And then it's like, I don't got time to do all of that. It's like, all right, when you get time, you know what I'm saying? Do your research. Nah, man, I appreciate anybody who was on the live. Shout out to Hancho. Shout out to Jazz. Shout out to Prime Harmonic. Uh, shout out to Enigma. Um, Tiro, when it comes to astrology, is Vedic older than Kemetic? Vedic is uh, not older than Kemetic. They say Vedic is around like 5,000 years old. But Egypt is like 10 to 20,000 years old from what we know. But then there's also the pre-dynastic, which was the actual, where there's no record of it that could have lasted from 200 to 300,000 years. So when you deal with the comedic sciences, you also got to deal with Atlantis and it get deep. So... <laughs> Yeah, straight. It's, it's, it's more important of you getting your own understanding of your astrology chart because you know your life, you know your blocks, you know your hangups, you know the shit that you're good at. So in order to get a full mental picture on what you need to do at a cosmic level, if even if it's just to be aware of it, you have to internally deal with your astrology. You can't look online or just give it up to people talking on YouTube about these charts. You got to spend time in your mental images of the sun, of these constellations, of these places. Before I get off, the constellations are like, so imagine you got a house and the constellations are the rooms in the house. In my basement is my office. My living room is where we watch TV. The kitchen is where we cook. The dining room is where we eat, so forth and so on. So if I have planets that's in my basement, but I'm trying to cook, shit <laughs> it ain't no tools for me to cook and since i can't cook in the basement i feel like my cooking skills is um not in order so the reason why we want you to study your astrology chart so you can learn the whole house you can understand like why don't i cook and that's just an analogy why don't i feel like that you know what i'm saying or whatever the case may be how is my life going to transform I don't know what I'm good at. You know what I'm saying? These are real questions that you can begin to look in your astrology chart. And once you figure out the different rooms and houses or the different rooms within the house and what symbolism that each constellation holds, each planet holds, you begin to place these dots. And so 
got a whole bunch i got a book and a whole bunch of content to help us understand that even if that sounds a little scattered and muddled brain but we're gonna work it out we're gonna figure this astrology out in 2020 if it, if it kills us so um really appreciate y'all support really appreciate y'all support and y'all i done kept y'all for way too long i appreciate this though i'm gonna move on and uh continue my research and i hope you do the same comment like subscribe share this video let people know about this and um let's move forward peace to the family and i'll see y'all on the flippy side